How to speed up your cleaner's production rates. Steve Hansen here, co-founder of the janitorialstore.com and myhousecleaningbiz.com. You know, there's nothing worse than your cleaners not meeting your production rates. Hitting your marks is what I call it. Um, you know, that's a real drag because what happens if, if it's taking them longer to clean than it should, it's costing you money. But let's say, let's say you set your mark and it's uh, three hours per clean. Well, what can we do to speed up the cleaner's production rates once we've done that? So, maybe we're first going to assume that everybody trains their employees, but that's not the case. Uh, many cleaning companies don't. Uh, they often feel like, uh, why bother? Because, you know, it's just they're not going to be here very long anyway. But, you know, if we're not training our employees on the general skills of cleaning, how do we expect to increase their production rates or to speed up their time? It ain't going to happen. So that's the very first thing on the list is make sure that we're that we are training our employees. And I think you should be doing two types of training. You should be doing classroom and you should be doing on-site uh, training. So for your classroom, uh, there you can go ahead and have a video. You can uh, have uh, props and uh, you can even have different types of equipment that you'd use on the job. You could have your caddies, you could have your brooms, your mops, um, you know, just many types of articles that you can use to make sure everybody understands how to use those things in the most efficient manner. And the other thing is, is that we can do on-site training. You know, this is when we're going to actually be taking them through a facility or a home, it wouldn't matter, and uh, you know, we'd already have a route planned out already uh, for example, if we're cleaning a three-story three home, we're going to start at the third floor and we're going to work way down. Um, if we're cleaning a single-story building, uh, obviously we would probably start uh, working right out of the janitor's closet, meaning that once we leave the janitor's closet, we're going to move to the right and zigzag back and forth and complete a circle uh, as we move around the, uh, the, the space and we end up right back in the janitor's closet. So there's many things that we can do though in that training. We could actually have a person to where they've got a maid cart with them uh, and as they're going through they're, at, they're uh, doing a complete clean. And or uh, we can have them do a, a two pass or a three pass system. Now you know that all depends on, on the facility and the type of home that you may be cleaning. So again typically before you even start that you should know uh, exactly what kind of route that you got planned or what kind of system you got planned for this uh, for that facility or home. So now when I say cleaning uh, when I say system I'm talking about cleaning systems you know and there's a few different ones uh, you can use zone cleaning you can use team cleaning skip cleaning collaborative cleaning um, those are the, the cleaning systems that you can use within a facility or even in a home. So when we talk about zone cleaning, that's where you may have assigned a cleaner a certain area of the, of the home or the uh, facility to clean. That's their responsibility and they take care of everything. Um, the other thing is where you may be using uh, a team cleaning system. Team cleaning system can be anything from two people to four people and more. But now the trick with that is to make sure that you have developed specialists. And what I mean by that, we're going to have a restroom specialist. So this person here is going to be trained on how to clean restrooms and bathrooms the most efficient manner, and they're going to be really good at it. Um, then we're also going to have a specialist uh, vacuum specialist. Now that person, as it says, you know, a vacuum specialist. They're going to know how to vacuum. They're going to be the, the best at it because they're a specialist. Something else you may have is that you may have a, a light cleaning specialist. So uh, that person there, they could be doing some dusting, they could be picking up trash, you know, and it, it really depends on, uh, on what you want it to consider as light duty. Um, and then you'd have yourself a utility specialist. That utility specialist could be picking up trash uh, where trash has been dumped. Uh, they could be uh, mopping floors, they could be doing stairwells, different things like that there. Again, you have to have this all, all assigned ahead of time. And that's why I really make sure, you, you really got to make sure that when you're doing a team cleaning that you have job, job assignment cards. Very, very important. So along with your job assignment cards, you'll have job assignment time cards. 
So with these here, whenever you're working with a team cleaning system, if you're using uh, your, your job assignment cards, that's pretty clear. It's, it's, it's assigning them the tasks that they're going to perform and, and the route that they're going to take. When you do a job assignment uh, time card, this here is going to tell you exactly where that person is going to be within that home or within that facility at any given time because you're going to have the times written out. Uh, so let's say it's, uh, you know, it, it's uh, 7 o'clock. Uh, 7 p.m. you're cleaning a commercial building. Uh, you should know that any one of your specialists will be at this area in, at that time. And it's because you've done your job assignment time cards. So very, very important. Uh, your team cleaning is probably one of your most efficient methods of cleaning. Uh, you can really get some high production rates with that. And again, it all goes back to training. That's where everything comes back to is training. You got to take the time to train. Now, some other uh, cleaning systems that you can use are skip cleaning. Now, skip cleaning is where you may skip a task. Um, for example, if you're cleaning a commercial building and you're cleaning it five days per week, well, maybe two days out of the week, you're not going to be going into one area of that facility because it just doesn't get that much traffic. And uh, maybe you're seeing that there's a stairwell that doesn't get a whole lot of traffic. So you may skip, skip that two days out of the week. Well, that's obviously uh, for those two days, it's going to uh, raise your production rates because you're going to be skipping some tasks. But that's all you would do. Then again, on a uh, collaborative cleaning uh, system, that is where you have the tenants of the facility helping you clean. Yes, you can have your tenants, your clients help you clean. So in this case here, you could say that uh, what we've done is that we've placed some uh, trash bins or brutes uh, throughout the facility and you can ask them to dump their own trash into those into those brute barrels and you collect the brute barrels well there again you can see how that would really reduce or speed up your time for your production rates so those are the things you got to consider and um, if you do all this here I guarantee you you will speed up your time on your production rates for your for your cleaners now, one thing I've learned over the years is that let's say you've maximized your system. I mean, you've got it down to a T and, you know, we, we, we can't do any better than what we're currently doing. But let's say your cleaners, for whatever reason, they end up taking 15 minutes to a half hour too long or longer than what your mark was. Well, you can always guarantee that they've done a couple of different things. The first thing you always got to do is ask them, have they changed anything in the training that you've done for them. Have they changed any routes? Have they changed any procedures? That's the first thing you want to ask them because 90% of the time, well 99% of the time, that's the case. They've changed the route. They've changed the system. Which is, you know, in most cases that's great. You want people to try things and, and be more efficient. But if you see that it's not working, you have to address it and you have to address it right away. Let people know that you know, I appreciate you trying, but it's just not working because you're actually taking longer to clean. So go back to the system that we that we trained you on, and you'll be able to hit your mark uh, day in day out. So and the the other thing is is that maybe they're visiting too much. So maybe there's people in the office uh, or in the home, and they're just visiting too much, which increases their production or increases their production rate. Just meaning that it takes them uh, longer than it should. So, you know, everybody's got to be on the same page that, you know, it's fine to acknowledge our clients and, and talk to them and, and be pleasant uh, and kind, but we can't let them uh, dominate our time. So you have to be able to, you know, let them know that you have to get going. Otherwise, uh, you know, your supervisor is going to get on you because you're not getting done on time. But generally, those are the two, two reasons. So... If you do these things, again, I'll guarantee you that if you do these things, that you'll be able to speed up your cleaner's production rates. Um, by how much? Well, it all depends on where they're currently at and, and what kind of system you have in place right now. But uh, in any case, you'll still, still see a significant difference, especially when you start um, doing multiple homes and multiple locations, and you start adding up that time that you've been able to shave off, but yet st still kept the, the quality at a high, high level you're going to be making you're going to be making more profit 
because the less time it takes them to clean, that's labor. And our labor, as everybody knows, could be anywhere from 45 to 55% of our job. So anytime we can reduce our labor costs, it's a good thing because those labor costs also affect other costs. So there you have it, guys. Um, so, you know, again, uh, you know, how do you speed up uh, your cleaner's production rates? Just go ahead and, you know, follow some of the cleaning systems that I described. Uh, you know, develop specialists and definitely do some training. If you do that, you'll be fine. So hopefully you found this helpful. If you have, go ahead and click on the like and share button. And as usual, um, if you uh, have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, go ahead and click on the subscribe button. Uh, button up there and uh, you'll be able to see hundreds and hundreds of cleaning videos uh, on how to uh, develop a, a successful cleaning business. So until next time, we'll see ya.